What up y'all, it's T-Turn. Today we're finishing Pokemon X and Y's scrapped original story. Allegedly, the leaker that came and posted everything that was supposed to be in X and Y that just never made it. We're finishing it today. And at the end of this, I will let you know my verdict on whether this whole post has truth to it or is just a hoax. There are a lot of crazy ideas in this post. Scrapped X and Y town ideas, how the fairy type came to be. Let's see what they conclude this all with. Zygarde was one of the last Pokemon implemented in the game. It was originally planned that he wouldn't appear to the players he'd be included for future connectivity in the data, but would merely be hinted at. But this idea was shot down due to the difficulty of keeping such things secret in the internet age, and then was just placed in the game. This doesn't sound impossible. So what they're saying is Zygarde wasn't supposed to be in Terminus Cave, but... It was going to be in the code of the game. What are you talking about, Pokemon? Talk about the internet age. You know, for the 3DS age, you're in the age of DLCs. You can make it so people have to buy something and it expands their game and then Zygarde's in the code or a free update. What is so difficult about a free update? This point is unusual because the 3DS is actually the first age of a new game system where it was hard to crack down and figure out what was in the games. X and Y was leaked around early October, but it wasn't until early November, a full month later, that Smealum even leaked the Ancy Hoopa, Volcanion, the two Megas and all. But Smealum, if you take him out of the picture, nobody would have known what the Ancy Volcanion and Hoopa looked like until pretty much they were officially revealed. I think the Ancy was revealed February of next year. The 3DS, there was something difficult about it in early stages, even when us players try to hack the Ancy Hoop and Volcanion and all. We had to use this weird game cart that was very limiting. The 3DS had some kind of safe protection on it. So the 3DS was one of the first times in your laziness where you don't want to make an update itself that you could have hidden Zygarde in the game. And the name would have been discovered probably. The name Zygarde, but people wouldn't have known what it was about. And they would have speculated. The name Zygarde, it starts with a Z. They would have gotten Guardian vibes and then Norse vibes because of that guard part. Honestly, the reason Pokemon Z was scrapped, if I think about it, is they just didn't want to invest the resources to do it. And in my opinion, a big indicator of this comes in with Ultra Sun and Moon, where when they got the chance to do what Z probably would have been, that they gave it to a different team to work on because they just don't want to deal with that. And so the answer was in front of you the whole time with Pokemon Z. They could have just made it a DLC. So X1 comes out in 2013, you make Pokemon Z DLC come out in 2014, then you push Oras to 2015. Now, this framework was exactly what they finally did successfully pull off with Scarlet and Violet where Tropicus was absent from the main game, and then they got to tell that extended story with the whole DLC. That's probably deep down what they wanted to do with Zygarde. If it wasn't a sister game, like the Platinum of X and Y, because if you just look at the metadata in the games, and it seems like there are two versions that were scrapped, it is possible it was more in line with how they did Black 2 and White 2, so it was a whole on sequel. And in that case, the DLC would have been the way. Either way, stop putting things in your main game, bro. Pichiram pissed me off so much. They just put that dude in the game and dude was discovered within minutes. I don't go on last one. I didn't see him until like weeks later when I freaking got Master to give me the event. But I don't know why Game Freak, Nintendo, they all can't space out content. Thankfully, they aren't being stupid with one thing. And we don't know if it's confirmed or not, but remember Cool talking about some M related mythical that could be movie related. And it could be something for the first time they didn't put in the main game's code. So when that movie is revealed, they're going to update the code like I'm saying. Let's keep going. The dungeon Zygarde appears in was actually originally intended to be where Mewtwo was found. But in the end, a new area was made for Mewtwo in the Pokemon Village. Terminus Cave was supposed to host Mewtwo? You could still have it be Zygarde's cave. And so you just find Mewtwo there in the post game. And when you talk to him, it says Mewtwo is inspecting the area, something like that. To just indicate that it really is Zygarde's cave, Mewtwo's just chilling in it. What they did ultimately with Pokemon Village was pretty cool. It was a reflection of what the Cerulean Cave was. In Gen 1, the Cerulean Cave in Japanese was the Nameless Dungeon or the Unknown Dungeon. So the Pokemon fans in Japan especially, going to Pokemon Village and seeing that same name appear with Mewtwo in it, it was supposed to give that same nostalgic vibe. Well, to say what they did with Mewtwo is fine, is giving them too much credit. Mewtwo 
kind of nothing came out of it. It would have been so much cooler to have a story attached to Mewtwo. Dude, at the end of the day, was just a statue. At least in the post game, you could have had something like, you know, all the Pokemon in Pokemon Village are seeking refuge. You're trying to be safe. So when you go to Mewtwo, that is actually pissed off at you and runs away. And then you actually have to go and find him somewhere else. At least a two-part simple event like that would have been cooler. I look at this picture of Mewtwo in the cave and it never sits in how incredible it's supposed to be. Mewtwo is in a game standing somewhere for the first time again. Here's Terminus Cave here in the corner of the region. At the end of the day, it's not much different. It's the exact same vibes as finding Mewtwo anywhere. So I suppose that's believable. Man, I'm kind of pissed. It would have been so much more mysterious to have just the name of the Z Legendary and have our imagination flowing wonder it was supposed to look like if y'all remember leading up to the hype season there were already all kinds of ideas people were drawing like purple serpents and all and zygarde is nothing like you would picture it to be so keeping it mysterious and not just fully showing it to us right away would have been so much cooler because when you encounter zygarde too you got all these cells popping up dude is supposed to be this enigma it would have been much cooler to actually not have him in the game and then just put the anti volcanian and hoopa in the game put volcanian in the power plant in the post game Put Hoopa somewhere, they ain't seen the reflection game. There are literal spots for them. It feel like they took him out. You freaking took out the ones that should have been standing there and left the man, you programmed this man in who should not have been standing there. All right. And then this one we covered. In the early stages of the development, Deancey was intended to be an actual evolution of Carbink, but it was changed as Deancey's design was altered a bit more and was then promoted to an event legendary. This was done around the same time it was decided Zygarde would be an in-game Pokemon and a new event Pokemon was needed to fill in the gap. What the frick does that mean? If it's in the code of the game, that really just sounds like you get it from a movie. That's horrible. Yeah, this is just something weird where they're saying they took out Deancey, so they had a hole, which makes no sense. So they took out Zygarde from mythical status and put it in that hole. Weird. Well, that's the end of the post, my dudes. What do y'all think? Hoax or no hoax? I'm going to give you my answer. And you have to understand... I don't know the answer, right? This is gonna be my opinion. The truth, no one knows the truth. I think some of y'all sent my videos to Riddler Koo, and even he's saying, bro, we only started to get information when Chinese localization started, even we can't tell. So no one out there knows the truth. But here's my ultimate answer. 40% of me thinks this is real. 60% of me thinks this is a hoax. And so ultimately, I'm saying this is a hoax. Now, the person who wrote this did it in such an interesting way that it's not like other leaks you see on 4chan. It's from a specific perspective of how Game Freak would think and how game developers would think. And the creation of this post, whoever has no life and made it, if it was fake, the amount of thought that went into it must have taken them like 10 hours to formulate their thoughts and perspective on how Pokemon X and Y could have been and then they turn that into a post of what it, they pretend it was first. Everything they talk about, for the most part, checks out. The idea of Team Flare being aliens. This is an RPG thing that happens in other game series, right? It also explains why Team Flare was so naked at the end of the day. Another thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about Solar Flares, right? Team Flare being named off Solar Flares. It's not in this post, but if you look at the admins, which, of course, the whole Team Flare is forgettable, so no one remembers the admins. The admins of Team Flare are... Aliana, Bryani, Celosia, Mabel, and Zerostic. Okay? Now I want to tell you something. Solar flares in real life, there are several classes to them. There's the very smallest solar flares. These are A class. Then you got bigger ones. These are B class, then C class. Then you get to M class and X class. These are the five classes of solar flares. Look back at their names. Aliana, Briarni, Celosia, Mabel, Zerostic. The first letters are taken from the classes of Solar Flares. So they already have this extra trustial vibe. Solar Flares is a reused concept that ends alien civilizations and all. Even though there's no expansion on what Team Flare really is, this is evidence right here that Team Flare does have something outside of Earth to them. Whether they come from outside or they're seeking something from outside or perhaps they believe in a creature that's from outside 
Maybe in Pokemon Legends Z, we get introduced to an alien creature that fell down to Kalos long ago is the true origin of Mega Evolution. And this ties into Solar Flares in some way. We don't know why they were called Team Flare, but clearly Solar Flares does come from outside Earth for the alien vibe that this post made. And they didn't write that here. They had a cool idea for Mega Evolution involving it relating more to something extraterrestrial like Deoxys. And then months later, Deoxys plays a role in the original Mega Evolution's fight at the end of the Delta episode. He mentions Looker investigating the aliens. This is exactly what happens in Pokemon Sun and Moon. As much as I hated it, he had an interesting perspective of how the fairy type was made by them making Eevee the gatekeeper for if a new type could work in Pokemon. And remember, I explained in that video how if you look at the fairy types we get in Kalos, they look like they resulted from them having Sylveon as their image of what a fairy type should be. This is a very well-made post, and like every successful con, they made it absurd, which might sound counterproductive at first. If you wanted to make a believable 4chan leak, why don't you make it believable? That's not necessarily how it works though. And that's where a lot of 4chan posts fail because they don't know exactly what they want to be. This post knows what they're trying to do. And now that content it talks about being scrapped did turn out to happen years later. No one knows. Hoax or true? Comment one of those down below. I've given my best case for both sides throughout every point we've talked here. So now it's up in the air. Shank that like button. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.